for that, generally I'm just going to be introducing some very important people with some important messages to pass on to all of you about today's ceremony and the process of uh, reconciliation and how we arrived at, at today. So to get things going, to get things underway, I'm going to introduce you to our head of college, president of Pearson College, Craig Davis. Thank you, Ty, and welcome to everyone. Um, and welcome to Pearson United World College, one of 18 global campuses that stretch across nearly every continent, and a movement which is committed to intercultural understanding, internationalism, and is mission-driven. However, I would say that the UWC mission cannot fulfill intercultural or international understanding without first acknowledging, understanding, and working with the local context. And that local context for us is the traditional ancestral territory of the Xianu Beecher Bay First Nation. And I think we have to commit ourselves to developing that relationship as we'll be doing today in order for us to be able to live out our mission of developing intercultural understanding because it's the necessary foundation to do that work. So that's how I would like us to understand our land acknowledgement today and to celebrate the fact in pushing this forward in our naming ceremony, we're hoping to fulfill the first of our many action points from a reconciliation action plan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Craig. I'm going to uh, take a moment here to Welcome our next guest. It's an honor to invite Elder Hank Henry Chips to the stage. And could you all stand, please? He is going to say a prayer. Is it working now? Is this working now? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, a lot of our First Nations have been dealing with the uh, residen residential school issue. And uh, the prayer that I selected today to do was sent down to me when I was working with, I work with School District 62, and it was sent by Shirley Alphonse. And I'd like to do that for you right now. I'm starting to think. Get up here, Russ. <laughs> Create a great spirit as we gather in the circle. We are thankful for each as we remember and honor the little ones whose lives ended at many residential schools many years ago. May the ancestors watch over them. May the roads to the outside be green by tall, majestic pine trees with sweet scented healing flowers. Along the way, little birds singing in their laminate, acknowledging their passing. May the candles lit in their honor light their way. May the an angels comfort their, them along with their prayers as we send our love and wrap them in warmth, protecting their journey. We also remember their families left behind. May they know comfort, peace with all the love we send. Hi, Scott. And um, just like I said before, I leave before, all this work has been a cul culmination of many, many people. And it's an honor for me to be here today talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's an honor to do this. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elder Hank Chips. Please sit down. So I'm going to invite uh, Craig back up to the stage again, so he can't get too comfortable. And uh, he's going to talk a little bit about the journey that Pearson College has been on with the community of Chiano and Chief Chips and many, many people, as Hank has already mentioned. Um, it's uh, been an enriching process for all of those involved. 
But uh, to give you some of those details and to also provide some acknowledgments, I'm going to ask Craig to come back and uh, do that on behalf of the college. Thank you, Ty. Yes, um, the main purpose of this next slot for me is to actually acknowledge and thank the people involved in this work, which has been extremely important. Um, and to do that, first, I just want to provide some contextual remarks. Nothing too long, don't worry. I'm not going to launch into a very long speech. Um, but I think recently I had the opportunity of um, joining Anne McClellan in a Canada-wide education conference. And on the keynote panel was Chief Ian Campbell from the Squamish Nation. And for those of you who don't know, the Squamish Nation is just across the water from us. And Ian Campbell was really quite forceful in talking about not allowing reconciliation to become mechanistic or performative. And it's something that many of our indigenous students here at Pearson would share that view as would all of our students. And so I think really there's nothing more to me, for me to say about our reconciliation action plan and our working group other than the fact that we really are genuinely committed to the concrete actions that you can see in that plan, which is why we've divided them into short-term actions and mid-term actions and long-term actions. And doing that in partnership with our Xianu brothers and sisters. And doing that in terms of building relationships positively, but making sure that people feel that we're making concrete strides in that direction. And so the opportunity we've got here today to start with our St. Choton language naming ceremony, where we will take the names and the iconography, the designs and the images of the salmon people and place them over our houses, the very places where our students live and work and that will transform the iconography for Pearson College in both stationary, website design, emails, um, on the very sign that greets you as you come onto campus. I think it's enormously important that we recognize this as a, as a significant concrete action. Because hopefully it will signal to everyone our intent to move forward with all of those actions and to signal to everyone that this is the right, rightful way of recognizing the territory upon which we reside and live, and to signal our way forward. So without further ado, I would just like to ask individuals that I mentioned who've been involved in the Reconciliation Action Plan itself and in the working group, just to stand up when I mention your name so we can acknowledge you properly for the work you've done. And to start with, in terms of our St. Chotten language guidance, Elder Hank Chips, thank you so much. And I would just ask you, as I go through a list of the other individuals involved, just to hold your applause until the end. Um, but would you each stand up when I mention your name? So of course, the house signage concept and design was a collective effort and collaboration between Chief Russell Chips and Lucas Altkamp, Berenice Sanders, and a collection of our year 46 and your year 47 students um, some of whom are not with us. So to start with, our indigenous students who are not here, but we need to recognize them very importantly. Nivi Rosling, Hannah Edenshaw, and Shazne War. Thank you to those individuals. Um, and then for our students who are here, Kio Ishikawa Doyle, um, Marlene Neef, who unfortunately is not here because she's graduated, uh, Francois de Varin, Alice Chan, Iris Lin, Sienna Stevens, Mohtara Zoe, Jamie Coe, and Sophie Fister. And moving on to the sign production, Deanna Cuthbert and Brett Morehouse. So on behalf of Pearson College uh, and the Shiano First Nation, I would like to thank everyone and all members of the Reconciliation Action Plan Working Group for their dedication and efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Craig, and thank you very much to all of our contributors. 
Um, our next guest really does need no introduction because he is both physically and spiritually already a part of our community and has given most generously of his time, his patience, his knowledge, and his experience to share with us. And uh, I would like you to join me in welcoming to the stage Chief Russell Chips of Chiano First Nation. Ooh, bright lights. So welcome, everybody, to Beecher Bay, Chiana, uh, the traditional territories of Chiana, the Salmon people. It's uh, great to be here with you. It's an honor to be here with you. And I've always, always felt welcome and at home every time I come here. The, the people here always make me feel at home and keep me involved and, and treat me, most importantly, like a human being, which is all anybody really wants to act. Wants. When they talk about reconciliation and, and calls to action, all those different types of uh, phrases that come to mind when, when it talks about um, coming together, um, don't seem to be phrases here. They're, they're actual physical things that are happening. And it's been a pleasure working with the people here at Pearson College. Uh, it's uh, Ty, Deanna, you've always treated me very well. And I just, I really en enjoy being here. So they were talking about the, the naming of the houses. And I said, well, we're Beecher Bay, the salmon people. So if we're going to rename something, maybe we should use salmon names. And uh, good idea, we thought. And then we started thinking, we need to hire an artist. And um, I'm, I'm like, well, if you hire an artist, then that's always going to be someone else's work. It doesn't belong to us. It doesn't belong to Beecher Bay. It doesn't belong to Pearson College. It belongs to the artist. It's the artist's work. So we probably should get together somehow and make our own design. And uh, together, I'll, I'll, start, I'll start the design, and we'll send it off to, to the art department here, and maybe they can take the design and add a flavor that's specific to the house. And so I um, went home and I drew a bunch of salmon pictures and I sent it to Deanna back and forth and then she sent it to the art department. They sent them back, which um, I haven't really met yet. Is like, is you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's virtual these days. We're stuck in the virtual world. So it's nice, nice to meet you. Um, <laughs> wow, it's been an honor working with you guys. Um, our work is going to be forever now, so thank you guys. It's nice to be attached to you, um, and it's nice. I, I can't wait for everybody to see the, see the work. And uh, it leads to back to that word, reconciliation. Um, we're going to display the artwork, and we're going to display the names. And guess what? I don't know how to speak the language. We have to call an interpreter in. She's going to tell us, uh, Ivy. Yeah, she's going to tell us how to pro properly pronounce those words. What do you think is a bad thing? And I feel like it's bad, but it's not. It's reconciliation. Together, we are going to learn the language. Together, we're going to share the words, and sh together, we're going to verbally pass them on to everybody else. That's the way. We've done things for years and years, and that's the way we used to do it, and that's the way it should carry on now. And I'm, I'm grateful for that, and I think that it's just so appropriate that the, the, the names have changed. And, and I'm, I'm just fascinated with, with the end results. It looks really, really good, and I can't wait for you guys to see them. Uh, there was something else on my mind. Sintrothlin is the language that they're, that, that's, that's been chosen because we're in Coast Salish territory. Coast Salish is, is um, sort of from uh, Port Townsend, Seattle, Vancouver, somewhere in the interior, and sort of this part of the island. And then the rest of the island is um, Kwagwakwiak or New Chandler. Those are the families that are around. But inside those families, 
there's a whole bunch of other languages. And just there's um, Klalem, Sintrothin, Halkaminum, there's just a whole bunch of other languages. So don't feel that um, Sintrothin is feature based language. It's just, it's the areas, it's attached to the Coast Salish people. I, I'm, my family roots are from Beecher Bay and uh, um, Cayucat, so I speak, um, I should speak two different languages, um, Sintrothin and Halkaminum. So it's, it's, uh, there's a bunch of other languages that we need to learn, and that's part of what's gonna happen here when you get to see our, our, our language. You're, you're gonna know that Sintrothin's here, and then you're gonna discover that it's not the only one in town. You may go back to Beecher Bay and someone will say, we got some Sintrothin language over there, and they'll go, oh, I don't speak Sintrothin, that's not my language, it's Halkaminum. But th th that will be true. It's just our families are all from different spots, and the language is different in different areas. But Sinchothan is the main for this particular area. Uh, and I'm glad and happy to be standing here with you guys. Um, like I said, I'm even a little bit nervous today about it, speaking about it. it just I'm not actually an artist. I, I just have some ideas. I carve here and there. It's something that my grandpa had taught me years ago, and I, I love to carve here, and uh, it's an ongoing thing, and once again, I'm happy to be standing here alongside you now and displaying our beautiful artwork, and I'm hoping it's here, a gift to Pearson College, to Machosen, to all the people out here. Um, please take the gift that we're providing you and uh, enjoy it forever, so thank you. Pardon? On behalf of the college, thank you very much, Chief Chips. Well, we're almost at that moment, but before we do that, I'm just going to take a minute or two to continue to fog up here and uh, not be able to see anybody. Um, what I want to do is just take a moment or two to talk about some of the history behind our houses. They've been here for almost 50 years. And they did not always have the names that we've been talking about today or yesterday or even before that. So I want to thank Theron Shaw. Thank you, Theron, for doing some research on my behalf and doing a little bit of a history on the houses. So when the houses were first built, they were one, two, three, four, and five. And uh, as uh, Chief Chips was saying, species of salmon, there are five species of Pacific salmon. So that worked out well. But in the days of the one, two, three, four, five, uh, when the house parents took over those particular houses, the house was named after them. So house number one back in the day was Jean's house after teacher named Jean Godin. House number two was Larry's house after Larry Huddard. Uh, house number three was Edgar's house. House number four was Eric's house, Eric and Barrett Turner. And house number five was Richard's house. And that carried on for a while, except uh, for a house that was the first one that got into the, the world of corporate sponsorship or family foundation sponsorship. And the first house to be named after uh, sort of a corporate getting together to support the house was Calgary House. And that happened around 1980. It was the first one. And house number two uh, went through another house parent, was Coop's House. Uh, some of you may remember uh, Coop's and her husband. And then Albert's House, house number three, and house number four. This was unique, uh, and it was the uh, Marg and Mark's Makavidi. And they didn't name it after themselves, or one of their first names. They actually named it Harumbi House. And Harumbi House, if you don't know, is uh, Kiswa Kiswahili, uh, Kenya's national language, and is a slogan which means pulling or working together. The Harumbi spirit embodies the ideals of assistance and teamwork, mutual social responsibility, 
and community self-reliance, which I'm sure resonates with all the students here today. So finally, house number five uh, eventually became Gary's house, and then McLaughlin House. Back to house number four, eventually became East House. House number three, eventually became Victoria House. House number two, eventually became Japan House. And house number one, as I mentioned, was Calgary House. So with that said, um, I'm now going to invite some uh, important people to the stage, starting with our 10 students who are going to come up here, and they are going to be part of the unveiling ceremony, which is about to take place. So I would like to invite Francois, Lachlan, Sophie, Rajvendra, Sienna, Mogdaga, Iris, and Patrick, and Alice, and Jamie. They're going to have to squeeze in behind there. When we rehearsed this yesterday, there was a lot more space. <laughs> and next up on the stage, to talk a little bit about the design collaboration with Chief Chips, Berenice Saunders and Lucas Olskamp. Well, firstly, a huge thank you, especially to the Shiano people and Chief Russ Chips for our virtual collaboration, which I think is so graciously during the COVID period came together to such a beautiful result and now to be in person, to be so privileged and lucky here together. So we just wanted to offer a little bit more context before we unveil these designs. Again, just speaking more on what was this process uh, and also going into the details of how these designs arose, evolved and emerged uh, from the gifts, the artworks that were given by Chief Russ Chips. So after these designs were gifted by Chief Russ Chips, the Reconciliation and Action Committee appointed Berenice and I as creative liaisons for student input and as supervisors of the digital adaptation of this input into newly, formally reimagined house designs. If you may, this was a personification <laughs> that was kind of requested of us to take of these designs. And through this, we formed a student input working group around design and the arts. Many of those who are behind us here uh, joined, as well as many second years who are not here to join us, but are hopefully joining virtually or in spirit. From the student working group, we then took uh, two people from each of these houses in this committee. We came together and we offered a series of intensive uh, end of the year discussions. <laughs> so it was a chaotic time near the end of the year, but spent this time to come together to reimagine and brainstorm what could be possible through these designs. After many uh, sketches and ideas, brainstormings, we then finally came forward with our vision. Each of the five new house designs uses a common salmon design, again gifted by Chief Russell Chips, and then was then added and evolved and decorated with house elements and colors unique to each of the houses here on campus. The unique designs represent an acknowledgement of the various environments and elements which we are grateful for on and around our campus and for all of the species, ecosystems, and elements that inhabit or are affected and benefited by these, which are. The elements of that Lucas is talking about is the sea, the land, the sky, the sun, and the moon. We took these five elements and uh, connected them with each one of the houses, the colors houses. is red, blue, yellow, green, and purple. We research the coastal nations and their art and culture to see what symbols could be further explored and adapted in each house, uh, new of the house designs. Uh, from this, we adapt each of the elements in, in, and in unique symbols for each house. The land became a series of leaves. The sea became a wave. The sky became a feather carrying on the wind, the seeds. The sun became a ray of light. And the moon and the stars in the sky. Each psalm also contained a series of symbols honoring 
the many part of our community as they come together. In each salmon, you will find three backbones representing the many supports and structures that uphold our community, the staff, faculty, and students. Mm -hmm. You will also find a egg sac, uh, yeah, a egg sac of each, in each salmon that contain 40 eggs, 40 eggs that represent an approximate number of students in each house, living and uh, taking care of each other. And each egg sac is cradled by two hands that represent the house parents who take care and hold for the students every year. We are so grateful to have had this opportunity to collaborate on this project and hope that these new signs and symbols will offer a wonderful foundation of collaboration for new growth, adaptations, and evolutions to arise in each of the houses in our future ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lucas and Berenice. Uh, it's an amazing collaboration, and you're about to be amazed by these productions. But before we do that, I talked a little bit about the past, and now I'm going to talk about the present. And uh, Chief Ross Chips mentioned about uh, learning Sanchotan language, and we're all going to start today. We're all going to start together. And it's really important, and to help us uh, get started, we have a very special guest from the Wasanich First Nation. Um, Ivy Seward is joining us here today at short notice to come and help us learn about the names, their relationship to the salmon, and some history behind that. So Ivy, please join us on the stage. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> Hi, Shkasim. He worked at Pearson College. Hi, Shkasim. Asa Taltela Mat, just less than that, Hussein, which I've been eat Madeline Morris and a Shuili La. Asa the Sanchathan Huchi Stanak, um, led Hussein at the Nan Stilen. Um, I got the I escape uh, tia um I couldn't go on a hela um I got the CM so when at the I the haha steel tia tangen I got CM I got the the CM he work at Chino then um CM school a concert tia tia tangen. Um, my name is, my uh, board name is Ivy Seward. I'm from Husetnich. I'm from the Sanich First Nations. Um, and there's four nations comprised of the Husetnich First Nations. And I'm from Huchatl, which you might recognize as Sartlip. Um, my late parents are Ivan and Madeline Morris, and I just want to share with my relatives here that my my elders, my ancestors from home in Husetnich, they traveled and visited a lot with the Huchienich people. They traveled and visited and they practiced their culture and shared language. There isn't much difference between Sanchothan and Huchienich. They they can converse with one another, and I remember as a little girl how they conversed, and they loved hearing their own native tongue. So don't feel backwards in any way. This is a, I feel like this is a really touching moment because you're moving forward with this word reconciliation. You're you're recognizing the the traditional lands of the Chienoch people. And which is very touching for me that this is happening. So I really thank each and every one of you for this move forward. Um, and as I'd mentioned in my own language that I've been teaching Sanchathan for, I said, that means lots of years. <laughs> and um, it doesn't mean that I know everything, but um, I, I do this because 
This is what I was taught by my elders. They said, Ivy, we're teaching you so you can turn around and you could teach. You can help teach too. And most of those elders that told me this are gone. All of them. Um, I have one uncle left who could speak. One uncle left. There aren't much out there and um, I don't know, I'm just kind of getting emotional about that, but sorry if I'm taking up too much time, but um, I wanted to share what I can to help. This is, all I got is that you want to learn about Sanchathan and these salmon names, that that's, there's a lot to learn, and um, this is your first step into it. Because, you know, our people, not only Chusetnich, Chienoch, uh, what was the other name I heard? Was that Suquamish or um, there's all Coast Salish people. If you look at a map and you look at all those nations, all of them live along the edge of the water. They live, they live there. These are one of the staple foods for Coast Salish people. So I find this really powerful that the idea is with salmon. And especially for Huchieno people, because they, that translates to the, the salmon people. And that brings me to breaking down that word. It's not up here, but it's called Sjeno. And that means the, the working people. So with Coast Salish people, Huchienoch people, Huchieno people, we believe in Hiles. Hiles is the creator. And the reason I choose the word creator to translate that word is because if I said to you, God, Hales means God, then where does your brain go? Okay, so we have to be careful how we interpret ourselves because of the history of our people that was mentioned in the prayer, residential school. You know, the being forced to pray and Everything that, you know, I'm not going to touch base too much on that, but we have to be careful because we believe in Hiles, our creator. That's where these come from. The creator is the one who creates. Those were the first citizens of the land before Huilnuch people, Huilnuch people, Huilnuch people. They were here first, then Huilnuch people. Then So it's, this is really powerful. I find it very powerful. And sorry, I can't see you guys because my glasses are steaming up too. I could just see some masks nodding. It's like, thank you. I like that. <laughs> that much I say. And if I have something else to say, is, I'm not really sure what the process will be. But sure. Sure. Okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. I am so impressed. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Or did you have something to say first? Like the elements that we were representing, here is the color blue of the, that Calgary house. And uh, that's the color and the element is the ocean. And here is like the waves representing the ocean and the color blue. And here are the, the exacts that we were talking about, like the 40 and the hands of the, the house parents holding and taking care of them. Haishka, that's beautiful. I love the interpretation of the, the carving. Um, this one is called Fate One. Can you say that? Fate One. Fate One. So, so it goes Fate One. Fate One. Rather than saying it straight through, it has a little glottal stop. Fate One. Good. Good job. Okay. <laughs> 
I really love it. I love the waves too. That really represents uh, with um, speaking about the waters. Did you take that again? Okay. Wow. Oh. Okay, um, this one is called Stakwi. 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 Good. Good job. Would you like to speak about this one, please? <laughs> I, want to I would love to say, yeah, like. Um, this was like uh, the color of the land and represented on the, uh, the symbols are the uh, three leaves and here are in each one of the backbones and again the salmon in the representative colors. Hi Shka. Stokwe is one of the largest salmon. Beautiful. This one is called Kualoch. 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 So there's the galadal. This is what a galadal is. So if the galadal was right here after the O, that would change the language to another language. That would pronounce it as kwa loh. So that changes the language to halkamitnam, which is the Couchin dialect. And as I'd mentioned earlier, that all the neighboring nations, we share language. It changes slightly with the Sanchatan is the Saanich First Nations language. We get over to Sangis, which is uh, it's very, very, just barely different. Same with when we go come over to Chienoch. Very different, um, very little different. Sorry, I should correct myself. It's not much different. Go over to the States, Klelem, you might know as Klelem. Theirs is very similar to ours, too. So our people, you know, the waters, was though that was our highway. We, our people traveled by canoes. They, they went fishing can, with their canoes. That's the highway of the Coast Salish people. I just wanted to share that part, too. So, yeah, this one's Kualoch. 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 Bit, little bit of popping. This one is very different from English. So it pops right here. Good job. Beautiful, another beautiful one. This is so touching. This one is called Hanan. 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 Very easy to say, isn't it? <laughs> so that one's nice. That's very beautiful. And okay, so last one. Looks like. Wow. <laughs> Um, so that's so beautiful. Um, these look like um, arrowheads to me. That's beautiful. That's spearfishing. That's what I see in it. <laughs> okay, this one is called Thaki. 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 
sorry, I'm, I'm kind of slightly mispronouncing because my mouth is so dry. When you speak Sanchafen, it's very different compared to speaking English. So when you're speaking English, you're constantly swallowing, swallowing your saliva. But when you're speaking Sanchafen, you're not, you're, your body doesn't permit you to swallow it because you need the saliva to pronounce. This one is thaqi, thaqi, thaqi. There, I got a little bit of saliva back. <laughs> thaqi. <laughs> and sorry, I think I kept it from you to refresh our memories with the last three. Can you do that again? Thank you. Appreciate that. So now we have the, the five um, elements here. Here is like the, the wind carrying the seeds and representing with the feather. And here, the wind and carrying the seeds because like the new renewal. And here is the stars and the moon and sun, a ray of light. I should see him. Appreciate that. <laughs> So I also wanted to add that um, in the Sanchathan calendar, um, how many? Uh, four of these salmons are in the Sanchathan calendar. Um, thaki, thaki is called Chan Thaki, which is the name for July. That's because that's when they come back home. That's why. Hanan is Chan Hanan. Chan Hanan, and that's for August. That's the humpback salmon. So that's when they come back home to our river, Salukthal, which is Goldstream. Fate one way over there is the coho salmon. It's the month is called Chan Fate one. And that, again, that's the time of the year when they come back home. And then the last one is Allah in the middle here. That's October, because that's when they come back home. You know, just thinking about this when I was, when I first met my husband, he brought me to meet his his elders, his family. It was that time, I guess. <laughs> but I was fascinated by meeting them because they would always have all these jeno. All these, they would have them smoked beautifully. And that, you know, that's a way of preserving is by smoking the salmon because that's a way of life. You know, our food, our traditional food is medicine. Everything that from the ocean is considered me medicine that our First Nations people eat. Like sea urchins, that's medicine, that's calcium. There's so much about traditional foods. Um, anyways, I was talking about my husband's family when I went to meet them, and this was quite some time ago, but their house was very old, which sounds really r rude in English, but to me it was beautiful because it looked lived in. They had all their traditional belongings in their home, and in the corner of the house was a pile of beautifully smoked salmon and it reached almost to the ceiling and I was fascinated by his grandmother who cooked up a um, uh, smoked salmon soup and I've never eaten that and it tasted so good I tell you it's good <laughs> I just had to share a little extra with you before before my time is over I'm not sure there's something else I needed to cover I hope you've all enjoyed this evening, and I'm really um, thankful that I was able to be here, even though it was on a short notice. <laughs> um, I just really enjoyed it, and I, I have to thank each and every one of you. So this hand gesture is haiska. 
It means something like thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's a real powerful word, haiska. And I'm going to ask you one more thing before I leave is when an elder comes up to share prayer, we don't clap. I don't know if any of you noticed I didn't clap because it's not a performance. It's a, you know, our belief of inhales. Use your hand gesture. That means thank you so very much. That's what it means. Okay. Hi, Shkasi. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ivy. Um, this is a small token of our appreciation on behalf of the college. Thank you very much. I actually didn't want you to stop. <laughs> you know, we are a learning institution, and we are all learning so much from you. And uh, as you mentioned, this was on short notice. I was just absolutely amazed you put all of this together for us this evening. So thank you again very much. Thank you. So I also want to thank our students who were collaborators and did the unveiling tonight. Thank you, Berenice. Thank you, Lucas. And before you go, we have one more thing left. And uh, this sign is not yet made yet, but we are going to have it proudly installed at the entrance to Pearson College. And this is going to be our welcome sign. <clears throat> I can't wait to get that up. So thank you, everybody, for being here this evening, and uh, really, really appreciate your support. Have a safe, good evening, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you, Ralph. I need to. Amazing. Good job. Ivy's going to join us for dinner as well. Oh, wonderful. Yeah.